HBO and BBC's joint drama series Industry has been quite a popular watch since its premiere in 2020, shocking and enthralling viewers with its plot filled with betrayals and spectacles, both steamy and intellectual. The series follows professional affairs at the London office of a reputed investment bank, Pierpoint and Co, where five young graduates join with entry-level jobs, with the pressure of having to secure their position in the firm within the next 6 months. Although the show can sometimes come off as heightened melodrama wrapped inside layers of finance jargon, The developments and plot twists that take place over its two seasons are quite entertaining to say the least. As Industry returns with its third season later this month, it is worth briefly revisiting the events covered in the first two iterations. A spoiler warning ahead as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you've watched the first two seasons of Industry already, let's dive straight into the video. And while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a lot. Industry season 1 began with five young college graduates arriving for one of the most important interviews of their lives at the Pierpoint Investment Bank's London office. All of them are taken in as grads who have to prove their worth to the company in a short time, along with getting used to the extremely demanding and often inappropriate work environment at the office. Six months after the date of their hiring, Pierpoint will hold a special reduction in force or RIF day, on which it will be made clear who among the grad interns will continue as full-time employees. As it is made very clear that not all five of them would be given the chance to continue, intense competition takes center stage from the very get-go. Harper Stern, played by Mahala Herald, is a confident American woman who is rather proud of her comparatively humble roots, for she does not hail from a rich and influential family like some of the other applicants. The managing director of of the cross product sales department Eric Tao is rather impressed by her for he too claims to come from a similar humble background and Harper is given a desk in CPS while she continues to impress her professional superiors the woman is worried about a different matter in her personal life for Harper has been lying about her graduation she never finished her education and so she has to get fake certificates made by her ex lover but she is not very confident about submitting them however when Harper makes quick progress in her role and is praised by Eric for it she gives up her inhibitions and submits her fake academic transcripts to the HR department. Yasmin Kara Hanani hails from an extremely rich family of businessmen and artists, but that does not give her any special treatment at Pierpoint. Being adept in multiple languages, she is taken into the foreign exchange sales department, where she has to tolerate the inappropriate and sexist comments of her immediate boss, Kenny Kilbane. While Yasmin is unable to protest, Harper stands up for her, which leads to a good friendship between the two. Harper shortly moves into Yasmin's house as a tenant, but professional rivalries are bound to ruin this bond. Although Robert Spearing is also from a moderately humble Humble Scottish family, he is not as expressive about his roots. The young man lives a flashy lifestyle with the respectable amount of money that he now earns at the CPS desk, and also with the similar-minded friends that he makes at the place. He eventually gets close to the VP, Clement Cohen, who is seemingly unbothered about whether Robert is able to make a positive impression on the higher-ups. It is later that Robert learns about Clement's terrible heroin addiction, which even leads to the VP getting fired from his job. While Robert himself struggles with a growing cocaine addiction, he also gets drawn to the dominating yet cold Yasmin. The fourth new intern, Hari Dhar, unfortunately does not last very long at the grueling workspace, for his desire to prove his worth takes a rather heavy toll on his health. As he keeps working continuously without ever taking any real break, even to sleep, Hari suffers from a terrible heart attack in the office bathroom and dies immediately. Gus Saki, who is assigned to the same team as Hari in the investment banking division, hopes that the relentless pressure and unlawful environment at Pierpoint will be called out after this incident. However, when Hari's death is simply covered up as possible suicide and even a scathing article by an ex-employee at Pierpoint does not result in anything, Gus wonders whether the bank is worth working for after all. Harper and Yasmin's friendship starts to suffer when both get attracted to Robert to some degree. but neither of them actually decide to be with him but they have a meltdown at the end of industry season 1 when harper pulls off the first major moment of betrayal in the show despite treating her like his favorite apprentice eric never stopped himself from being extremely harsh on harper whenever he felt like when she had failed to succeed in a certain task Eric singled her out and brought her to an empty conference room, shouted at her, and also left her locked inside, feeling extremely vulnerable. Although she did not immediately speak out against it, Harper eventually informed the CPS VP Daria Greenock about the incident, and Daria further discussed the matter with the branch's president Sarah. Sarah and Daria eventually came up with a plan to expose Eric's toxic nature and to oust him from the company, for which they needed Harper's official testimony. On the other side, Eric and FICC Global Head Bill Adler presented her with a different choice to recant her claim and instead earn a permanent position at Pierpoint. 
Although Harper felt humiliated by her boss's behavior, she ultimately chose to side with Eric rather than with Daria because she found him more relatable. As a result, she fixed her position in CPS under the leadership of Eric, while Sara and Daria were both fired from the company for their plans to take over. This did not sit well with Yasmin, who had toiled through her internship at the FX department and faced regular moments of discomfort under Kenny. She had found a professional friend in Daria, who provided her support at difficult times and had worked hard to earn a transfer to the CPS desk only so that she could work with Daria. Therefore, when Harper betrayed Daria and threw her under the bus, Yasmin was livid at her bizarre choice, particularly of supporting a man who had humiliated her instead of helping the women who were trying to change the toxic work environment. This led to a falling out between the two friends, and they kept up their animosity until around the middle of season 2. While the two women gradually start to talk to each other, limited to a professional capacity, Things changed during a work tour to Berlin. While Harper had always told people about her brother John, the two were actually estranged, with the young man living in Germany with no contact with his family. When Harper finally finds her brother, it is revealed that their mother had been very harshly demanding of John, forcing him into pursuing tennis as a career, even though he had very little interest in it. Ultimately, John chooses to stay away from her sister still, as Harper's encouragement earlier in his life seemed like selfish acts to him. Right before and after this confrontation, Harper tells Yasmin about these twisted family dynamics. And so the women do become friends again, although the genuine bond of season 1 is lost. Industry season 2 also introduced Yasmin's father, Charles Hanani, who is an extremely rich and influential industrialist with a lucrative business profile. While Charles' profile is initially handled by Maxim Alonso, Yasmin's childhood friend and briefly her lover in the second season, she wants to make him a client of Pierpoint and raise her own worth in the company. After Yasmin befriends Celeste Paquet, a private wealth manager at her bank, she sets up a meeting between the two sides. Although Charles behaves horribly during this meeting, his daughter decides to apologize for her temperamental outbursts shortly afterwards. Yasmin knows that her father can be an extremely rewarding client, and so she continues to try and bring his business. Even when she learns about Charles's numerous affairs with women in life, each of whom he had legally paid and shut off, she does not choose to react. But in Berlin, Yasmin meets with her nanny from childhood Teresa, with whom Charles had had an extramarital affair, and it is suggested that this incident had taken place when Teresa was a minor. Just like with her own uncomfortable experiences at Pierpoint, Yasmin does not react to this matter either and continues to work with Celeste to make her father a client of the bank. However, when one of the current interns, Venetia, speaks out about inappropriate behavior by a client and Yasmin is then called out for suggesting that Venetia simply ignores the incident, it finally strikes a chord in her. Being called out by someone as problematic as Kenny makes Yasmin realize how she has been a hypocrite so far, and thus, she finally decides to speak up against unlawful sexual advances, not just at Pierpoint, but also in her personal life. At the end of Industry Season 2, Yasmin accuses her father of grooming Teresa into a relationship when she was a minor, and then she also tells Celeste to drop Charles as a client. However, both these decisions work against her, as Celeste clarifies that she values Charles' worth way more than Yasmin's, and Charles freezes her out of his accounts. It is revealed that Yasmin was not only living on her father's money till now, despite earning her own, but she had also gotten the internship at Pierpoint solely because of her father's influence, despite not even applying for it. As a result, Yasmin is homeless and she is seemingly soon going to be jobless as well, as the CPS and FX merger will see her out. She now finds a friend in Robert, who willingly lets her stay at his house, but she soon creates trouble for him as well when she asks Robert to arrange for some cocaine for her. After seeing the effects of hard drugs on his colleagues firsthand at the end of season 1, Robert began industry season 2 completely sober. He keeps his distance from cocaine throughout the season until the very end, when the drugs bring a sudden twist in his life. Before that though, Robert is given the responsibility of handling the portfolio of Nicole Craig, the same client who had inappropriately made moves on Harper earlier. The woman ends up making a move on him as well, but Robert gives in and gets into a full-fledged sexual arrangement with her. However, he seems to think that the intense chemistry, despite its unethical nature, is something special and that Nicole is specifically attracted to him. Therefore, when he learns that she had done something similar with Harper too, Robert feels betrayed. Out of anger, he pushes the new graduate intern Venetia towards the predator, knowing too well that Nicole will make advances on her as well. When Venetia speaks out about the incident immediately, unlike any of the central characters, Robert cannot help but feel guilty about it. At the end of season 2, he agrees to help out Yasmin and even fetches drugs for her. But as fate would have it, he is stopped for a breathalyzer test on this very night. Robert gets caught with cocaine and is arrested, but instead of calling any of his friends or superiors for help, he seeks assistance from Nicole. The woman does get him released 
but then she asserts her control over him once again and Robert gives in too although the situation seems a bit forceful it is quite evident that Robert actually wants to be with Nicole despite knowing that such a relationship will only harm him beyond repair Jesse Bloom another new character in Industry season 2 had gained popularity in the world of finance during the covid years after his statements on live tv had directly influenced the market in a certain way therefore when Harper realizes that the man has recently moved into the same hotel where she has been staying she prepares to make a formal offer to him after much deliberation from both sides Jesse Bloom agrees to be a client of Pierpoint under Harper and so the latter tries to arrange the best deals possible for him when a brick and mortar drug store Fast Aid suffers from loss of business because of the pandemic Harper suggests that Bloom short sells the company for high profits This is particularly because the corporate giant Amazon has been planning to buy out Fast Aid, but the situation is not entirely clear. Fast Aid's rivals, the telehealth company Riken Healthcare, want the government to intervene with an anti-competition report, for they want to get the prized NHS contracts that would otherwise go to Amazon if they entered the market. With the situation still very unclear, Harper continues to try and keep a solid relationship with Bloom, as having him as her client literally makes her more powerful than Pierpoint in certain scenarios. Incidentally, Gus. who had left Pierpoint at the end of season 1 now works as the assistant to MP Aurora Atkinley who has been overseeing the anti-competition report therefore Harper wants to get some inside information through him which she ultimately succeeds in when Gus reveals that the report is being cancelled this means that Amazon will be sweeping in to buy off Fast Aid and so its share prices would rapidly go up once the deal was made Harper goes to Bloom with this information operating by herself and not as a representative of Pierpoint and suggests that he buys more shares in the company. However, Bloom does a complete turn when he appears on TV and backs the anti-competition report, essentially bringing it back into existence and ensuring that Amazon would not be allowed in. He does this right after buying Riken shares at a very cheap price and then selling them off as soon as the prices jumped up massively after his TV interview. Bloom had been associated with Harper for so long only to get the inside information from Gus through her. And once she brings it to him, he sees his own financial gains and gets rid of his professional relationship with Harper and Pierpoint. Interestingly, the two other characters, Aurora and Gus, both also largely benefit from the situation, suggesting that they too had been waiting for this to happen. Aurora gets a huge political boost after Bloom backs her, and it is possible that she specifically told Gus about the report situation, knowing well that he would leak it to Harper and then Bloom would ultimately bring it back into existence. On the other hand, Gus absolutely knew that his leaked information would reach Bloom through Harper, and although he loses his job at Aurora's office, the bright young man ensures that Bloom hires him as an assistant. Towards the end of Industry season 2, Eric and Harper team up once again, only this time to try their luck at being hired by a different bank. They eventually brought in the market maker Rishi Ramdani and the executive director Danny Van Deventer or DVD and the four of them proposed themselves as a team to rival banks. They are accepted by a different bank too after assuring them that they would bring their clientele over from Pierpoint including Jesse Bloom but the plan fails as the bank wants them to move to New York. Eric and Harper are the ones who don't want to leave England and they go against Rishi and DVD asking Bill Adler to fire the two for their conspiracy to leave Pierpoint and let them lead a new team in the London branch. Adler agrees as well especially since he wants to avoid any more scandal with Nicole to which Harper can testify. However, at the end of the series, Harper shockingly learns that Eric has betrayed her by revealing to the HR that her academic transcripts were fake. This leads to Harper getting fired, although the general consensus is that this is not really an act of betrayal by the senior man. Eric seemingly protects Harper, for he knows that the woman will get in immense trouble if it is revealed that she indulged in insider trading with Bloom, which is punishable by law. Therefore, Eric removes his protégé from the industry altogether in order to avoid more problems for her. In fact, during their last conversations before this twist, Harper even referred to him as her father. Although she was covering up their secret plan in front of Rishi, this specific conversation seemed to affect Eric, making him realize how he was technically dragging a daughter figure into such murky situations. At the end of Industry season 2, Harper does get fired from the job, but the situations of Robert and Yasmin are not made very clear. Whether Eric will indeed lead a newly formed London team or whether the New York branch will take over is also not seen. All of these matters and more will be dealt when Industry season 3 starts streaming on 11th August. So thank you for watching this video and do share your thoughts and expectations about industry in the comment section below. Do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you in the next one and for the time being we're signing off. Bye.